All right, so this is sort of going to be an unboxing. Although I guess it's a little more of an unbagging considering this didn't come in a box. What I'm going to be doing, I'm going to assemble this zapper device that came with no instructions that I purchased from wish.com. And we're going to see if we can figure out how it goes together and then we're going to test it. This honestly seems like a pretty dangerous device. Uh, it's intended to produce high voltages, has a little oscillator on it. But we don't buy things from wish.com because of logic. We buy them because they look like stupid fun. So let's open this up. Looks like we've got our high voltage transformer here. Heat sink, on off switch, resistor. And according to the circuit board, an NPN transistor. We've got a male pin header and a screw to hold the transistor out of the heat sink. And I happen to have my soldering equipment here. So let's put this thing together and see what it ends up looking like. Put a little bit of the Samtech Flux on there. My impressions of this versus like rosin flux and no clean flux that's usually made for lead free processes is this conducts heat much better. It's more of a gel, which I think is more useful than the liquid no clean fluxes. It conducts heat at least as well as rosin flux in my opinion, but it's much easier to clean up and it doesn't have quite as strong of a smell to it. So just overall, it's easier to work with. Always a little handy when you have something to hold your work piece for you. And I can cheat a little bit here because of the flux. See how quickly that tacks on there. When you flux it up, it helps thermally conduct to the pads and bridge the gap. Whereas if you just put solder on here and touch it to the metal, it won't flow like that. There we go. I'm about a mile away from the workpiece, given how I've set this up. I mean, there's a big hole in the solder joint, but for what we're doing, it'll be fine. That's right, I have no standards. Not sure which way to install the NPN. I'm gonna assume that this metal heat sink here is supposed to actually contact this guy. So I'm gonna set him in there. I'm gonna install the screw and then I'll solder the transistor on. All right, let's see what our instruction board says next. I suppose we could throw the transformer on. All right, these transformer leads appear to go to different locations than I originally thought. No, that doesn't make any sense. I don't even know. There are three holes here. Presumably for the transformer, it's supposed to sit like this, but it's only got two wires coming off of it. These each come off as a pair here and here. So, You've got two pair, but you've got three connections. If any of them were shorted together, we would only need two holes. So I'm not sure where the third lead is coming from. You want to be careful about how much you heat up your plastic switches. If you melt the plastic, it can prevent the switch from even working. I've had that happen before. Sometimes you'll get to where the switch works intermittently. Oh, shit. But don't put the diode in backwards. It's probably not going to work if you do that. You want to make sure the stripe here on the board you can see down there, you want to make sure that stripe where it's showing the diode is lined up with the stripe on the diode. You can see that has a little silver strip on it. Put in your happy little resistor. I'm still not sure how the transformer is supposed to be mounted here. I think both the red and the blue leads are supposed to be floating in free space. That's going to be where the arc is produced. The middle pin connects to the positive input power. You cannot have that disconnected for this to work so that has to go somewhere i wouldn't recommend shopping at wish.com to be quite honest um everything i've purchased from there has been utter garbage this is probably the only thing i actually ordered from there that might have some fun factor to it and i'm starting to remember why i ordered it because it's advertising itself as an igniter and you're intended to have a 3.7 volt lithium-ion battery plugged into it. I don't have that. I'm probably just going to use a benchtop power supply, set it to 3.5 or 3.7 volts, and we'll see what it does. Maybe I'll try lighting something on fire, see if it actually ignites things. They actually had a schematic, and there was another version of this with no PCB whatsoever. So you're supposed to take one wire from each side here and put them through that center hole together. Whatever, if we wire it up and this doesn't work, it's uh, not gonna be fun trying to make this work. If you look at this, you might not be able to see. I swear that one pair of these is a thinner set of wires and one pair is a thicker set of wires. Or rather, uh, this wire here appears to be thinner. 
it's been a thicker wire, thinner wire, thicker wire. So I'm going to assume that's how you tell the difference between which of the two coils because they're not shorted together. So you're going to want one thin and one thick wire. Otherwise, you're powering both ends of the same coil with your positive 3.7 volts, at which point there's a zero voltage differential across this transformer, and it's not going to do jack. Still, I don't know if the solder is going to take to these wires. We're going to try it that way, see what happens. I have little faith at this point that this device is even going to function. And I'm still too lazy to go get my multimeter and verify. Big surprise. Solder won't take to the enamel coating on these wires. Which means we gotta take those out of there and try to shave some of the enamel off. We'll have to mechanically strip that enamel off. Watch me cut the wire by accident. The magic transformer of death is fully assembled. It's time to test this thing out. All right, now you can see the arc there. It's really stable, which is very strange. This is at 2.3 volts, and I cannot turn the supply up any higher because it's drawn over an app to do that. I would wager if you wanted to try and start a fire with this like it advertises, you could do that. This product really has no safety built into it. It seems pretty dangerous. I wouldn't recommend buying one of these. All right, I've just paralleled the two outputs on this power supply. We're going to try this once more and see what we get. Wow. Yeah, it's a little brighter. Draw on 1.14 amps at 3.5 volts. I'm not sure how effective this really is at starting a fire. Maybe if you had something like cotton in there instead of a piece of cardboard, it'd be more likely to catch. But this little bit of cardboard, it... It charred it, but it never opened up into a flame. It smoked a bit. So if you're going to use this as a fire starter, you really need some good kindling. 